Pat's Two Cents. Oh, you got to hear this story. Wow. Desperation on a quest. I was tired. Tired of being an apology and tired of playing a role. I was choking on the aftertaste of too much street life and losing all interest in endless servings of bull. For too long, I had been stuck at a crossroad, caught between two opinions, neither here nor there. <laughs> I was just aimlessly meandering through a life of quiet desperation and emotional neediness. I stumbled into a maze and got lost in space. Then I couldn't find my way, so I just sat there, wallowing in my own pity. Soon, time brought me a rude awakening. I had become an emotional cripple. My only response to that was to keep on spinning my wheels. I was going nowhere but down. Down into a pit of disillusionment where I kept looking for love in dead-end relationships. I decided I wanted out of my world of make-believe. It's time. Time to kill the charades. This party's over. There's no need to stay. Then I went on a search for some much-needed relief. On my quest for peace and rest, I took a seat in a church with high levels of skepticism. <laughs> Are they for real? What can they possibly tell me? What on earth can they do? We'll see. Well, I didn't know what I expected to find. I sure didn't know what I expected to hear. I had no idea what I was doing there and had no clue what was making me want to go. The church folks I had always encountered spoke with forked tongue and walked with one foot headed for heaven and the other sliding toward hell. <clears throat> I certainly wasn't falling for all that religious mumbo jumbo they had been dishing out down through the years after seeing some of the stuff they were still doing. Anyway, there I was, and there I sat, feeling so cynical. <laughs> and suspicious, feeling apprehensive, feeling out of place, feeling insecure, and feeling big tears running down my cheeks and butterflies flooding around in my gut. I can't do this. What the heck was I thinking? These people don't even speak my language and I sure don't speak theirs. I cuss like a sailor and smoke like a chimney. I don't even know if I can cross over. I don't know if I really care to try. Think, 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 think. Do I really want to do this? Do I really want to give up all that and the bag of chips too? For this? Well, yeah, those chips have gotten pretty stale. I guess I'll check this out. Look at these church people. They look so sincere. Hmm. They're not like those other so-called Christians I've been used to seeing all my life. These people here act quite different. They seem to be authentic, genuine, and warm. <sighs> they are a little too plain and square, but they really seem to be sweet. <laughs> there is a peace in them, especially that Hall family. There is something really special about them. And their daughter, who plays that piano, she is so warm and so real. The way she carries herself, always so loving and accepting, makes me want to give this church thing a try. <laughs> I don't know. This is it's just too different. I'm not sure I can do this. 
I hang with knuckleheads like me. I don't hang with people who know how to walk this thing out the right way. Well, except for my annoying next door neighbor who always says, Pat, now you need to give your heart in that voice to the Lord. I hate it when she says that. Think about it. She lives right next door. She is all I know in the faith. She is the real deal. And she knows how to walk with God. I sure don't. So who else? Duh. After toying with this big decision a while, yes, no, maybe so, I finally decided to give this new life a try. Yes, there was a lot of doubt on my part. Still, I decided to brace myself and pray that prayer. Mm. <laughs> you won't believe the prayer I prayed. It amazes me that God even answered it, but to my surprise, he did. Now, don't you laugh. The prayer. <clears throat> I don't want to be emotional. I want to make this decision without tears and mean it. I, I don't want anybody coming over here trying to help me pray or feed me some words. I'd like this to be between you and me. Okay, now, before I go through with this, you need to be clear on some things. I need to clear some things up. You know I'm not convinced about Jesus Christ being real, right? Okay. Plus, you know I'm not totally convinced that there really is a God at all. Mustard seed faith. I mean, after all, the Bible could be a great big fairy tale for all I know. However, however, I'm willing to find out. I don't, I don't even believe in heaven or hell, for that matter. What I mean by that is, this is not a way of escape for me. I am simply tired of just existing and living an empty, dead, meaningless life. That's all. If you're willing to give me a try after what I just said and willing to accept me on those terms, then I'm willing to give you a try too. Okay, here it goes. I'm going to say that prayer. Ready? Pause. Thinking. Pause. Lord, forgive me for my sins in Jesus' name. Said in three seconds flat. <laughs> okay, I did it. I said it. Now what do I do? How do I do this? I can't do this alone. I need help. Everyone I hang with does what I'm trying not to do. I'm so messed up. I won't last a day without somebody's help. But whose? After I finished running my mouth, guess who walked up and knelt down beside me at the altar? Yep, you guessed it. That annoying neighbor of mine. She asked me what I'd like God to do for me. Still guarded, mm, I quickly informed her I already just gave my heart to the Lord. I looked at her and thought, don't you dare gloat. I knew that she'd be tickled pink about what I had just done. She gave me a beaming smile and prayed for me. I didn't even remember what she said in that prayer. I just wanted her to hurry up and finish. <laughs> so I could go back to my seat without tearing up. We both got up to return to our seats. I turned, then I looked at her for a number of seconds. Should I ask her or not? You see, <clears throat> I used to avoid her like the play, so I wouldn't have to hear all that Jesus talk from her. I really didn't have much respect 
for any of the churchy acting religious talking people. Then I reluctantly swallowed my old silly pride and asked her, hear me. This was very difficult for me to say. Would you help me? Suddenly, without warning, my emotions broke within me like a balloon filled up with water, bursting under pressure, and I did exactly what I did not want to do. Cry! Yes, I did. Boo-hoo. I cried like a big old baby. So much for not emoting, huh? <laughs> I admit it. They were good tears. Real good. She was so happy, I asked. I was too. <laughs> Believe it or not, she did not gloat. She simply hugged me and said, Pat, I'll be glad to help you. <sighs> Boy, did she. <laughs> she helped me. Oh, shared insights with me and taught me so much. The funny thing was, she would often come over to share some of her lunches with me. I enjoyed listening to her humorous conversations. I realized that she was honest, open and freely transparent with her experiences and her struggles. We grew very close. The most delightful thing about her visits, mm, for me, was the comforting love flowing from her. Her love seemed to stream out of her continuously like a fragrance from a rose that fills the air with its soothing aroma. That's how her endearing love was for me. It would fill the whole room so much that I would feel all lit up inside. She was gifted with a special kind of love for everybody. Yes, you simply had to know her. Note to my neighbor, thank you, Gladys, for our good times together, for your faithful encouragement, and for teaching me to seek and lean on God rather than man. I love you for that, my neighbor, my mentor, my friend. Oh, about that quest for peace and rest. Three days after I prayed that prayer, <laughs> I discovered that the peace they all kept talking about was real. On the third day, when I woke up, I noticed I had something I never had before. I had that peace. I was at rest. Above all, I was alive. For the first time in my life, wow, I felt like I'd been raised from the dead. <laughs> I never knew that could happen for me or that it would feel as good as it did. All the inner turmoil that I felt, Every moment of my life was gone. Soon, I noticed I had inner satisfaction and a strong sense of purpose. How wonderful it is to be alive and free. You can pray that prayer too, you know. Try it on for size. Try saying these words. Lord, I don't understand it all, but I need your love and peace. Please forgive me and heal my heart. I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Please fill me with your Holy Ghost, Lord, and make me whole. By the way, would you send someone to help me too? Thank you. Amen. God bless you. This was Desperation on a Quest by Patricia Love from the book that still blows my mind. 
yours truly. That's my story. Amen.